Welcome to Alpha Cars. My name is Dimitri, and here I have 1999 BMW uh, M3 E36 convertible. Awesome car, and we have great videos on this car. The purpose of this video, to help um, some of the BMW owners that experience certain clutch behavior, which is hard to differentiate if it's normal or is there something wrong with my clutch? Uh, you would think that this should be a simple uh, question to answer, but there are certain conditions that make it difficult. So, and we found some forums on, uh, online that describe this condition, this exact condition, and we were trying to uh, get to the bottom of the issue and using experience those BMW owners that shared um, their concern in those forums. We couldn't get the answer. So now you're curious, so what kind of concern is it? So think of a clutch that feels great, it doesn't slip, it engages, it, the clutch pedal doesn't have a lot of resistance, but what you notice as you release the clutch, um, it almost, first of all, that engagement point when the clutch starts to grab and the car starts to take off, it's inconsistent. It always engages, but that engagement point is, uh, it could be earlier, it could be a little later, and it is often later than it's earlier. So it takes a little bit and then you start feeling that engagement. But once it's, ga once it's engaged, it feels great. Um, again, a lot of, um, it, it can transfer power, the car shifts nice, you put it in reverse, there's no grinding sound. Uh, everything is, feels normal except for that little bit of spot on as you start to release the clutch pedal. So since we were working on this car, and again, we've, we've been in business for over 30 years, we've changed so many clutches, we've talked to so many BMW owners with their concerns. Um, we can remember in the past, uh, from time to time, we would, would have a customer who would make a comment on their clutch behavior, but it always be like, you know what, it just like, I, that's how, how I always remember my clutch to be. And by now, these cars are so, they have so many years behind the belt, if you will, that even their owners don't remember how the clutch was when it was new. Um, so for those owners that experience this issue, we're going to tell you what, and first of all, it is not normal. Now we know. And uh, we will tell you what causes it and what we had to do on this car, what you would have to do on your car to make it right. And there are some other things you should consider doing that we will show you it all during this video. So stay tuned. Thank you. So here we are under the BMW E36 M3. Uh, we do have the transmission removed from the vehicle. You can see the drive shaft to the side. I'm going to show you the parts uh, we had to remove in order to get to the transmission. You can see the uh, exhaust system, heat shields. You can see some uh, cross members, the transmission uh, mounts. These are the mounts in the back of the transmission. They're in great condition. Uh, we did inspect these components, the things you want to look at. You, you want to make sure the heat shield is in good condition, not corroded, and uh, this would be a good opportunity to replace it. If there are any issues, you want to look at the flanges, make sure they're not warped, and of course they're going to get cleaned, and the new gaskets, new hardware will be used. Um, here is the uh, back of the transmission, uh, I'm sorry, the back of the engine, and with the clutch component still on it, at the first glance, it appears this may be the original clutch. You're going to look at the splines of the disc, and they're definitely very, very dry, and there are some excessive wear marks you can see on them. 
also the pressure plate contact point with a throttle bearing doesn't look super healthy to me either. So that is a good indication of potential issues. But as we're going to look at the front of the transmission inside the bell housing, we're going to see some more things that we need to deal with. So let me check this out. And here's the transmission. So when you do have the transmission out of your BMW, it doesn't have to be an M3. There are certain things you want to inspect. Um, you want to look at the uh, output shaft seal, which is behind this flange. And this one looks nice and dry, but we're still going to uh, follow the advice of our technician if we need to replace it. It looks like we're definitely going to replace the shifter shaft seal, which is right there, that little thing. And there's definitely plenty of wetness behind, uh, around it to suggest that it needs to be replaced. We're also going to put the uh, pin in this bushing, make sure it's nice and tight. And we're going to actually, speaking of bushings, there's something else we're going to check. We're going to look at this part, which is the shifter bracket. There may be a different name for it, but we're going to look at that bushing. And if it's worn out or disintegrated, we're going to replace that. We're going to check the rear mount over there. And we're certainly going to check and lubricate, uh, replace if needed, but certainly lubricate that uh, ball joint. So that's, those are the inspection points that we're going to do for sure. It doesn't look like the rear main seal was leaking on this vehicle, but we are certainly going to remove the flywheel, inspect the flywheel and replace the rear main seal as a preventive measure. We suspect the flywheel will be in good condition because this clutch will be replaced, not for the reason of wear, but mainly for the reason of other issues. Speaking of those issues, let's take a look at it together. So, after removing the throwout bearing, which I just did, so I didn't have to do it with the camera, what we found uh, is that this extension bushing is extremely dry. You can see the original grease, that white stuff, is completely dry. And the reason the clutch engagement on the release of the pedal was inconsistent was simply because that bearing was just sticky uh, on this bushing. And you can see why it was sticky, because it's so incredibly dry. So we're going to clean all that and we're going to inspect those service surfaces. If we see anywhere, we're going to replace that. So this whole thing will be replaced. And behind that, there's a transmission input shaft seal. So we're going to inspect that, but it doesn't look like it was leaking at all. We're certainly going to replace the throttle bearing. We're certainly going to replace uh, the fork, which is this part. It doesn't look like a fork, but we would still call it fork because those um, friction points from the clutch slave cylinder, which is this side, and from the fork pivoting pin, again, they were extremely dry on this car. So it doesn't look like this transmission was ever removed. So all this grease naturally dried up because these are not serviceable points. And this is natural that it happens this way. So whoever was driving, well, the previous owners that drove the car, they did phenomenal job with keeping the disc not worn because the clutch felt great on engagement. But during engagement, we had all these issues and now we can see why. So we're looking forward to replacing all these parts and completing the job and then we will, at the end of this video, you will uh, learn of the outcome, but I suspect it will be very, very nice. There's another little bearing we are going to inspect and most likely change, and that's called pilot bearing, and that is designed for this shaft to be sitting in it. The pilot bearing is pressed in side, it's pressed inside the flywheel, 
you can actually see that right in there. On some vehicles, it is a bearing. On some vehicles, it is a bushing. I believe here, it looks like it's a bearing, and we're certainly going to replace it after we remove the uh, pressure plate and the flywheel. So stay tuned with this video and don't forget to subscribe, consider sharing, and please let us know which videos you like the best by simply clicking that like button. We also installed the output shaft seal, which is behind this flange. We installed the gear selector shaft seal, which is right there. We also installed the new uh, bushing, uh, which comes with the housing, new pin, the ring, all that is brand new. Uh, the slave cylinder is going to be brand new. And you can see uh, the brand new flywheel. We also put in new output uh, rear main seal with the housing, the new sealant back there. That's all properly done. Here's the new clutch slave cylinder. And let's inspect now all the old parts that we took out of this vehicle. You can see, by the way, I'll remind uh, you early in this video, we covered the condition was that the clutch felt awesome as far as engagement, but it was inconsistent where the clutch would grab. As you release the clutch pedal, it could grab right where it's supposed to, or maybe a quarter inch past that point, uh, or maybe even a half an inch, but it always grabbed it, always had a good clutch engagement. And sometimes you would drive the vehicle for a while and everything would be fine, but there will be times when it would get uh, this inconsistent clutch engagement. And that's how we end up where we are right now. So what we determined that the cause of the issue was nearly completely dried up and nearly seized throw out bearing. Sorry for the video. Here it is. Just fine tuned it for you. So as you can see, the wear points uh, are terrible. And you can see it was grabbing uh, here. And uh, therefore, as you were releasing the clutch, it was still hanging somewhere here and then just jumping back. We found a few other things that is good to show. Uh, one was this bearing, which is called pilot bearing. And it is actually situated in the flywheel. So let me show you where it sits. It will sit right in there. There's a new one there. And then when you install your transmission, the input shaft seal goes in that bearing. Why do we need it there? It is basically to support the shaft so it doesn't uh, flex up and down. And that's a good way to do it. But this particular bearing was already very close to being seized. It's still spinning, but you can feel it's really rough on the inside. So that can cause another area of issues, not to mention when it does seize up right here. And when it seizes up, it almost welds itself together. It will then start spinning here and it will cause some serious damage to the shaft which we actually have repaired in the past on some vintage vehicles where the shafts were not, you couldn't find the new ones. There's a way to repair that too. Um, so now we have all these new parts and let's keep going with inspection of old parts. So these are the typical heat spots. It's not terrible on the flywheel, but we still replaced it. And of course you always put new bolts. Here's the original rear main seal with the housing that we replaced. Always put a new housing with it. This is the transmission output shaft seal. And you can see these two holes and you'd be like, why are they there? That's actually a good trick that we use in the shop to remove the seal to avoid any type of damage to the surrounding uh, seating area. And what you do, you pretty much drill the holes and you put in the big and short sheet metal screw, just a couple of uh, one uh, half a turn, maybe one turn, and then you put the hammer, uh, sliding hammer, and just pop it on one side and the other side, and you pull the seal out. That way you don't have to 
pride, which would be wrong. This is the old, uh, this is the old selector shaft seal. That's the bushing, which wasn't really bad, but it certainly wasn't as good as a new one. So we put a new one. New is always better than old. And here's the new clutch disc and a new pressure plate ready to go. This is the alignment tool for the clutch disc. So we use the alignment tool uh, by inserting it in that pilot bearing we talked about before. And actually at that point, you have your pressure plate here, the disc in between, and then you through the pressure plate through the disc, and then you align it here and kind of go up and down and center it. And then you can secure your uh, pressure plate properly, torque it down, and that assures an easy placement of your transmission because now you have that pilot bearing aligned to receive the uh, input transmission shaft. And I'll mention one other new item we're going to install, which is a common problem. Uh, we found a way to solve this problem because BMW does not offer a new part. And now we're talking about the heat uh, and sound deadening insulation in the transmission uh, tunnel. This one is not as bad and someone secured it here and there, but it's still loose in multiple areas. And while it's okay, it's not the worst we have seen, it can certainly survive uh, a few more years, but we, we know that the transmission job, uh, clutch job we're doing with all these new parts, they can go for another, hopefully, you know, certainly 10 years or more. Uh, and we know that this is not going to last this long. So what we have done over the years, we developed uh, a set of templates that we use to cut uh, a new insert, and it's a, it becomes a multi-piece that has the uh, high temperature adhesive, it has the heat insulation quality uh, and heat reflective qualities with this and sound deadening quality. So this works out very, very good. We've used it and it, uh, since BMW does not have a solution uh, using a new replacement part, we've been using the materials I just showed you. We finished the installation of the, um, I guess, adhesive heat barrier, sound deadening pad. Uh, there are different names you can call this, but you can see how it looks. And it's a really nice fit. So now we're ready to reassemble, install the new clutch. We already have the flywheel in place. The new pilot bearing is in there. The transmission is ready to go back in. The clutch disc and the pressure plate right there. And then the drive shaft, I'm sorry, the heat shield, the drive shaft, the exhaust, and all the other good stuff. And I'm looking forward to checking out that brand new clutch on this E36 M3. Now that we have completed all the work, let's put the carp in the air. Let's check it out how it all looks. We'll start from the back of the vehicle and make our way right to the gearbox. So we have the exhaust system back on the car. Of course, we have our heat shield. And as we're making our way towards the gearbox, we're gonna show you the flex disc, which is brand new. Behind that, we have the new uh, output shaft bearing. Above that, we have the new uh, selector shaft seal. And then over here, we have a, a new set of bushings, uh, the pivoting ball joint, and we have the new bushing right there. So that's all brand new. Essentially, right now, this vehicle clutch feels just like it is on a brand new car, brand new BMW M3 E36, because all the components related to the clutch operation, they are brand new. So, and you can see how the heat insulation kit looks because the original one is no longer available through BMW and this one worked out awesome. And the clutch pedal, 
feels 100% like on a new car. It engages just like it's supposed to uh, shortly, early on, shortly as you pull up away from the, uh, I guess from the carpet, as soon as you start moving your foot um, to engage the clutch. Probably within a half an inch, there's a nice smooth engagement and then it continues to engage and the pedal resistance on engagement and disengagement is consistent throughout uh, both uh, steps, throughout each step, I should say. Even after so many years in business working on BMW and Mercedes automobiles, we did not know the answer to this question. It took uh, almost a $5,000 undertaking to get to the bottom of the problem, but as we did that, we now have a vehicle with an incredible uh, condition, uh, how it feels on the road, clutches everything, clutches how you feel as you connect the power from the engine to through the drivetrain to your driving wheels. And we're so glad we did it. Not only we end up replacing the clutch and components related to the clutch, which is the flywheel, and of course the, uh, the disc, the pressure plate, the pilot bearing, the throw out bearing, the slave cylinder, we made some additional improvements that's going to go the long way uh, for the next owner of this BMW E36. We put in a new um, rear engine seal with the housing, which is the proper way of doing it. We did a new input shaft transmission seal. We did a new uh, bushing for the throw out bearing. We did a new pilot bearing so that the input shaft of the transmission has something to rest on as it spins. Uh, we put in the new uh, selector shaft seal. When you change gears, there's a little shaft and you saw that in the video. We did the new seal for the output shaft of the transmission. And then to top it off for the ultimate like new car feel of the shifter, of the original shifter, we selected to go with the original shifter, not a short shifter, because the original shifter, when everything is new, you should see how it feels. It feels awesome. Sometimes you don't even have to go with a short shifter kit. Uh, so we put in the new uh, pivoting bushing and the new mounting bush it, bushing for the um, uh, shifter rod bracket. All those components are new and this clutch feels absolutely phenomenal. So we hope that this video was helpful for those of you that have this problem or had this problem. And for those that hopefully don't have this issue, it is still a helpful video to consider what you or your service shop should consider doing on your car when you're servicing the clutch. Or maybe you have to remove the transmission for any other reason. So thank you very much for watching and we will see you next time. Consider sharing, subscribing, and please let us know which videos you like the best by simply clicking that like button. My name is Dimitri and until next time.